Hello, students. This is Dr. Rex Holliday, and I'm your instructor for research and development management. I wanted to um, take this time to give you this orientation meeting. And um, I, I'm going to go through some of the some of the um, different um, Um, management uh, things that you need to um, remember as you go through this course. And I also want to go through the uh, course syllabus, uh, talk about uh, some of the um, different uh, expectations, such as uh, assignments and due dates, and um, as well as um, best practices for I'm being successful in this course. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you at this time. Let's start the presentation. Okay. So I'm assuming that you probably can see my presentation here. And as I said, this is the orientation. I'm recording it for um, those of you who probably missed the uh, original meeting. So I'm Professor Holliday. This is some of my uh, background here in this slide. And the course textbook is Business Research Methods, and this is the 14th edition. So um, you should have access to this through your Moodle accounts. I have also uploaded the chapters uh, for each of the um, lecture weeks. So you should have access to those chapters and you, you're gonna make sure, wanna make sure that you're keeping up with the reading. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. This is the schedule for the live sessions. Um, the first, uh, the orientation session was this past Saturday, May, 3rd, uh, May 20th and the next live session will be this coming Saturday, May 27th. And then you can see the subsequent live sessions all the way to lecture 14, which is really going to be your proctored final exam. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So these are the weekly lecture topics. Um, at lecture one coming up this Saturday, uh, and it just will correspond with the reading assignment. Research Foundations and Fundamentals. And then Research Process for the following lecture. And then Lecture 3 is Research Questions. And you'll find that um, this is uh, key to research is to uh, learn how to, to develop and use your research questions. Um, research design, this will be an overview of that. Sampling that design. Data collection design, qualitative research. Um, this is also very important. When I was doing my dissertation, um, the assumption was that anytime you were doing qualitative, qualitative research, it really didn't have a quantitative or analytical uh, component, but that isn't true. It really, it really does, and and there are some ways to to um, include data analysis in your qualitative research, and you'll learn a lot about that. In fact, I ended up doing that during my dissertation, but up until that time, um, there was a pretty common um, misconception about the qualitative research. Uh, then you'll be doing data collection for observation research. This is also something that I believe used to be called ethnographic research where you would be the observer and try not to um, insert yourself into the subjects that are being observed. So, um, but this is called observation research. And then of course, experiments. Um, anytime you're using a controlled group, uh, you really are conducting an experiment type of uh, research. So this is data collection design for when, you, when you're doing research um, experiment. Um, and then uh, data collection design for survey research. You, you'll find that survey research is very common within the business sector. 
and also in the political arena um, as well, but also in uh, a lot of commercial um, products are um, tested in, uh, and, and proven in, in, um, uh, through uh, our surveys. Uh, so the survey research is huge uh, and within uh, and the um, business um, sector, as well as in the academic sector. You also find that a lot of human resources um, departments and companies will do um, uh, these uh, surveys, they, their opinion polls, in, uh, and they have different things that they list. So that is uh, very common in that um, arena. So survey research is going to be a big one for you to learn uh, that data collection design for that. And then it will be measurement foundations in lecture 10. You'll have measurement questions for lecture 11. Measurement instruments in lecture 12. And um, a few of your classmates have uh, done uh, some extensive uh, um, uh, data, data data analysis, data analysis rather for uh, in their current roles and, and past roles. So they have uh, some experience there. So when you're in breakout groups doing a, a live lectures, I'm going to make sure that I put uh, those individuals in separate groups so that they can help those of you who might be new to this. So, um, but they are very familiar with uh, different types of measurement instruments. Um, some that I can think of in the past were um, uh, IBM's SPSS, and uh, of course, people use um, Excel, and, and then um, there's uh, R um, coding in um, uh, SQL or SQL, and, 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 and uh, it goes on and on and on. But uh, uh, so those are things that you don't want to be familiar with. Um, chapter, uh, lecture 13, rather, is also chapter 13 and 14. And uh, this is going to your discussion on collect, repair, and examine data, and then also hypothesis testing. So those hypotheses are uh, critical. Uh, they are uh, tied to your research questions. So we'll be getting into that as well. Then, of course, in that um, lecture 14 is really your proctored final, final exam. Again, you will want to read all the chapters. There might be um, you know, due, due to your uh, time constraints, uh, what have you, you, you may want to um, skip chapters, but I highly recommend that you read all of the chapters that are assigned because some of the content that you'll read in the chapters will be on these practical exams, but I might not cover, cover those in the lectures due to uh, that two hour uh, time constraint on the lectures. So um, please be aware of that. And uh, of course, pace. Um, I want to encourage you not to try to skip ahead too far. And I'm going to go through the um, the, the course format and and Moodle here in a second. But uh, I I recommend you don't try to go more than three weeks ahead because I'm I'm going to be um, monitoring how well you do on the quizzes and in the discussions to see how um, uh, how well um, you're you're retaining and um, and uh, understanding the content so if there's something that we need to review um, I'm going to employ some um, iteration in the content and I might uh, be changing some of that um, so that we can cover things that it looks like you might be struggling with so so don't go too far ahead I, I want to uh, keep this uh, as a living uh, document in, in, uh, in a course that um, is going to uh, adapt as needed. So let me go to my other um, content that I want to share with you. So let's see here. We are okay. So this is the Moodle page here in. Um, and this is the text I told you about. This is the welcome message. Um, 
this is uh, that was the the um, orientation that I mentioned, and then here uh, for this coming week, and you should already have access to this information because I'm assuming that this stuff is going to be done um, prior to our lecture on Saturday, the 27th. But you'll be reading chapter one, you'll be completing this chapter one quiz, and then you'll be participating in this discussion. I'd like you to have your initial post in by Thursday of each week. So, so there's that. And then um, again, you have uh, in the following week, you have chapter two, there's a quiz, and then the discussion. I'm going to go over to the syllabus to um, make this, this is some of my contact information. Um, I am very quick on text messages. Uh, if you just try to call me, it might not pick up because I won't recognize your number. But do some text, identify who you are, and uh, for urgent matters, I will be very quick with that. Of course, always email me if you have any questions or concerns, uh, and I will try to respond to you within 48 hours or sooner on those emails. Uh, again, this was a required text. Okay, so now assignment policy. Uh, late assignments are not accepted. The reason I am um, so stern with this is because I want to have enough time to really give you some, um, uh, you know, quality feedback on your assignments. Uh, and, and if you're late, then you know I might not have time to do that before I'm working on the next batch of uh, assignments to be graded and and, um, and reviewed and critiqued. Um, also, I want to, to uh, know that uh, in those ex discussions, please respond to at least three of your classmates in those discussions. And like I said, you know, I try to do that by Thursday of each week. And then the writing assignments are going to be in uh, APA style format, and I be, I'll be grading per rubric. I did uh, create a rubric for your writing assignments, and uh, that's what I'll be using to, to grade you. And then here I go to, uh, I tell you what's contained in, in all of the, uh, the weekly um, um, lectures in, in the weekly assignments. And notice what I did here, I have uh, week one and two quizzes, week three and four writing assignments, and I use this pattern throughout. Five and six quizzes, seven and eight writing, um, nine and 10 quizzes, 11 and 12 are writing. And then on, in week 13, this is gonna be a reflection writing assignments. So this is not going to be based on any chapters or anything. This is where you get to um, uh, tell me um, what you understand, how you feel you're going to be using uh, the, the, the knowledge that you've gained from the readings and from the lectures and from your fellow classmates, as I say, because some of them have uh, uh, backgrounds and research in, uh, and could be a, a great resource to you for for coming up to speed and learning this content. And then I can just have at the end of the syllabus, it just shows that um, you have these, these quizzes and uh, the, the exam. So um, then um, you, can, you can go to uh, the APA style um, format. So this is, this is a, um, a style of uh, of um, writing academic writing that was developed by the American Psychological Association, and it's uh, pretty standard uh, at uh, most colleges and universities I know in the U.S. Uh, use this, and all and most research journals will require this format if you're going to be submitting um, research articles. I do a lot of um, reviews for different research journals. I'm a reviewer and uh, um, an editor for several of those journals, and I understand um, that uh, they are that that's a very rigid um, um, requirement. So they um, they don't uh, usually uh, they're not flexible on that. So anyway, so this is how I use it. I can go in. You can you can figure out how to do um, a title page if you just want to go in and 
learn how to do an actual paper format, click on paper format, and here it actually has sample papers, which I think is great. And uh, here is a student sample um, paper and a PDF. And look, it has all of these annotations. It tells you, you know, what uh, what these are. It tells you um, how to do an in-text citation. Um, it, it it just you know it gives you all of the, the information that you need to to do uh, your paper correctly to format your paper correctly all the way down to that that title that reference page rather in uh, in up here of course was the title page in the, the format that you need there so that's um, that's about it for the the presentation. Our orientation. I think uh, I've covered everything that you need to know there. Um, please be sure to reach out to me if you if you need um, uh, any help, any additional help, or if you um, have any uh, questions or concerns about the content. I, I really look forward to working with you. I think uh, I'm going to learn uh, a lot probably as I teach you because of your your backgrounds and experiences that you have and I, um, I it's, it's just a pleasure to me to be able to work with you so um, take care and uh, we'll see you later bye